because this aspect demonstrates to us what our religion is and it demonstrates to us the meaning of la ilaha illallah now the interesting thing about the jahili arabs the arabs before islam was that they actually believed in the same god that we believe in by the same name and the same attributes and that is allah you see they never depicted allah as an idol they made idols of Allah, of Uzza, of Manat, of Hubal. They made idols of all of these beings, but they never made an idol of Allah. There was no idol called Allah because they knew that Allah could not be represented by an idol. And they knew that Allah was their creator and their originator and their sustainer. Allah says in the Quran, if you were to ask them who created you, they would say Allah created us. If you were to ask them who sends the rain from the heavens, they would say Allah. If you were to ask them who supplies you your rizq, your food, they would say Allah. The Quran says if you were to ask them who is the Lord of the heavens and earth, they would say Allah. And this is interesting because their paganism is not like the paganism of modern religions. If you ask them who is their God, they will say Krishna or Buddha or something. These are groups who say, no, Allah is our God and Allah is our creator and Allah is our sustainer. And yet they are not Muslims. And we don't consider them to be Muslims, even though they say there is no creator other than Allah, and there is no sustainer other than Allah, and there is no Lord other than Allah. So when the Prophet is coming to them, he's not coming with a new God. He's not coming with a new deity. They know it is Allah who created them. Yet why are they not Muslim? Well, because they're worshipping idols. Well, why are they worshipping idols when they know that Allah created them? The Quran tells us, Surah Zumur verse 3, Surah Zumur verse 3, Allah says that if you were to ask them, why are you worshipping these beings? They say, مَا نَعْبُدُهُمْ إِلَّا لِيُقَرِّبُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ زُلْفَى We're only worshipping these beings so that they can bring us closer to Allah. Notice, the ultimate goal is Allah. These beings are stepping stones, they're intermediaries. They're simply tools we use to get to the grand deity, and that is Allah. Surah Yunus verse 18, Allah says they worship besides Allah these beings that are useless. And they say, these beings are our intercessors between us and Allah, our intermediaries. You see, we're too sinful. We're too unholy. And these beings are holy beings. So we go through them to get to the holiest of holy, and that is Allah. Now notice here, this is very important because their shirk was not in rejecting Allah. It was not in saying, Allah and Al-Uzza created me. It was not in saying that Allah and Al-Uzza will resurrect me. No, they firmly believed Allah is the creator, sustainer, nourisher, everything. By name, Allah, not Ramakrishna Buddha, Allah. Yet they're worshipping other than Allah. And they say, we're too sinful. We need to use intermediaries to get to Allah. Now this is important because unfortunately, we have Muslims in our times who fall prey to the exact same mentality. Word for word, letter for letter. We're sinful people. Change Allah to Wali. Change Uzza to Sheikh. Change Manat to Bir. And you get the exact same concept. We're too sinful people. We can't worship Allah directly. He's too holy. So we have to go through the saint. Or they will say, we have to go through the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We worship this being. We make prayer to this being. We sacrifice to this being. We invoke the blessings of this being because this being has a high status with Allah. He will plead our case to Allah. And all of us who have family back home, we know that this is unfortunately common amongst uh, the Muslims around the world. And this mentality is exactly the mentality of the Jahili Arabs. It is exactly the same. And this is compounded by the fact that if somebody says, how dare you compare Abir to Allah? How do you compare my Sheikh to Allah? The response is, what is Allah except Abir and Sheikh? What is Allah? Do you know the origins of Allah? Allah was a Allah was the main idol of Ta'if, right? We said last time, what is the main idol of Mecca? Who can remind me? Hubal. The main idol of Mecca is Hubal. And this was the original idol. Where did it come from? Who can remind me? Syria. From the Amalekites, the Amalekites. came from the Amalekites. This is the original idol that was there until the Prophet uh, got rid of it in the conquest of Mecca. Then the second major idol was Allah. And that was in Ta'if. These were the two main idols. Uh, Allah and Hubal. And then Manat was the, uh, the third and Uzza. So these are the main idols. Now, Allah, what, what is Allah? Allah was a man who used to feed to the pilgrims a type of soup. And the word for making soup in Arabic is letta yaluttu. And Allah is the one who grinds. Allah is the one who basically does the thing to make the soup. The barley, you grind it and then you make the soup out of it. It's not his name, it's his title. And this was a man who would stand on the road towards Mecca and everybody who went there, he would, he's a generous man, he would feed them. And so they called him Allah, the one who gives the soup, the one who feeds, the one who makes the barley for the soup, Allah. When he died, they said, let's commemorate him. He's a good man, he's a righteous man. So they build a monument, the mausoleum. And in our religion, we're not supposed to build a monument on a grave because of this reason. Exactly because of this reason. So they said, let's commemorate him. He was a good man. So they built a big structure. And what happens when you build a big structure on a grave? People come, they rub their bodies on it, they put their hands on it, they want to get blessings. And bit by bit, slowly but surely, it becomes an idol and a god that is worshipped besides Allah. So what is Allah except a holy man, a righteous person? And we already mentioned before that the most common being who is invoked on earth besides Allah is Jesus Christ. The most common being that is worshipped besides the true God is Jesus Christ. What is Jesus Christ, an evil being or a good being? He's a good being. He is one of the greatest of all prophets and messengers. You see, the slippery slope doesn't occur with evil people. I mean, how few people worship shaitan, right? The Satanists, how few are they? And yet look at how many people worship Jesus Christ in the billions. Because it's easy to slip with a good man. You put him above his place. You take him to a status above what he deserves. And this is what our religion came to prohibit. No, you don't worship anybody, including the Prophet Muhammad You don't go through him to get to Allah, meaning you don't direct your prayers through him. You take him as a role model, and you don't take him as another god, a demigod, a semi-god. So it is important that we understand that the shirk of the Jahili Arabs was a very unique type of shirk. It is not the shirk of, let's say, the Hindus or the Buddhists or the Zoroastrians. Because these groups, they believe in another god besides Allah. They don't believe in Allah. 
The God of the Arabs was the God of Abraham and Ismail and Ishaq, and that is Allah. That is the God that we believe in. Their shirk was not in rejecting him. It was in affirming him as being too holy. We can't get to him directly. We have to go indirectly. And it's very important that we as Muslims therefore understand what our religion is about. And that is there are no intermediaries between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 